Um, I'm Dr Nikki Dartnell and it's my absolute privilege to be the head teacher here at MV16. It's only been my privilege since April, so um, I am new head teacher. Before this I was a deputy principal at uh, Hills Road Sixth College in Cambridge. Um, I'm also new to Leicestershire as well. So uh, as of last week I have now been in the old pork pie shop. Um, and uh, after doing 6,000 miles of commuting for a term, I am actually now a Melton resident during the week. But I'm always up for people suggesting where to go. So I don't know Leicestershire, I don't know the surrounding area, so everything has been very much a new journey for me. And obviously I'm just going to talk to you a little bit, so I'm hoping that you've been around and about and that actually the college will speak for itself in terms of why choose us. But I'm also going to say a little bit about why I think you should choose us as well. And it may well be that actually we haven't been your natural first choice. It might be that we're not the, pe the college that is closest to your home. But hopefully, uh, how late you can get up in the morning won't be the deciding factor as to where you go and spend two years of your life. And obviously it'll be a bit more about the quality of education that you think that you'll receive. So having worked in 11 to 18 schools and having been in the sixth form college sector for the past 17 years, I am an absolute passionate advocate of sixth form colleges. I do believe that they are the perfect bridge between teenage and transitioning to adulthood. So we provide structure and support, but we also do provide um, the freedom to be an adult and to learn to be an adult and also to teach you to be an adult. So you have the freedom to come and go as you please, you have the freedom to dress how you want and to express your identity. And I really think that that environment helps you to develop the confidence that you need to go on to your onward progression, whatever that might be. The other thing about here, so having come from a sixth form college of 2,800 students, um, what's really lovely about here is that we have everything that's great about a sixth form college, but in a much smaller package. So it's really lovely for me personally to actually be able to get to know the students, our teachers know the students so well that they really can tailor advice and progression advice to them. Back at Hills Road when I was there, I was mostly lanyard lady. In fact, um, a student served me in the summer in a shop in Cambridge and didn't actually realise I left. So it's really lovely to be here and actually to be central to what's going on at the heart of the college. So we really do have the sixth form college experience, but with the small nurturing community feel. And it's not just about thriving when they're with us. Obviously that is incredibly important. It's important that we get them the qualifications that they want to go on to do whatever they want to do. But it's also important that they thrive when they get there. So hopefully everything that you see and when you speak to our students, it will give you a flavour and an understanding of how we do that and how well we prepare them. But I think the stats on the screen also help to validate that sixth form college experience and environment really does help them with the confidence and helps them to hit the ground running when they leave us and go on to their next steps. But we also recognise we have a tough job as sixth form institutions. We have two short years to take them from being sort of relatively spoon-fed year 11s to turn them into adults, to help them think about what they want to go on to do, to just help them with the, the daily issues of being a 16-year-old, and also to get them prepared. So it's quite a tough ask, and we do recognise that when they come to us, Actually, for the first week, they're probably just thinking about what they're going to wear, and that's the most important thing in their head. So our schemes of work and everything we do, our personal development programme, it is tailored and it's written to build those skills within them. We don't expect them to be super independent as soon as they get to us. We do actually have to help them to develop independent skills, and for some of them, that will come much more easily than others. So that's the beauty of the sixth form college environment. Adults, but with stabilisers that we slowly start to take off. So we have all of the support systems and the structure in place that will help them to flourish when they're with us. So that's a little bit about the ethos and why I love being here and why I love being in sixth form colleges. And this is a little bit more about sort of the logistics of what we actually offer here, just to supplement what you're seeing as you go around. But one of the things, so wherever you go, whatever institution, every institution has myths out there about it. Things that get out about an institution. 
When I was at Hills Road, we used to hear time and time again, oh, they're not very good pastorally. And it was a legacy from years ago, and it wasn't relevant, but it was still out there. And so obviously, as a newbie, ear to the ground, I hear things. And what I hear about MB is, oh, they're not very academic. And I have to say, I don't understand that having been, having been here six months, I really don't understand what that means. It's absolutely true that we don't have incredibly high selective criteria for you to come here, but it does not mean that we won't stretch and challenge you and have high expectations for every student, whatever it is you want to go on to do. So if you want to go to Oxford or Cambridge, tick, we get students there. If you want to do medicine or vet, tick, we have students going off to do that. But if you want to go into the army or you want to be a police officer, tick, we also know how to provide that advice. So actually, I'm incredibly proud that our students are an incredibly diverse community who all have ambition, but that ambition is different for each and every one of them, and that's how we treat them. So I'm going to just talk a little bit more then about that adult environment that you've just seen. So hopefully it speaks for itself. So we obviously have a £14 million, 12-year-old state-of-the-art building, and it was designed to feel adults, to feel more like a university type environment and the students respect it as such which is why 12 years later it's still in pretty good nick so we have lovely spacious uh, classrooms we have more than enough study space students can be here they don't have to be here if they're not in lessons so for example some of our year 12s this year actually don't have any lessons on a thursday and they are free to choose where to study but some of them do like the discipline of studying in college, and we have many and very varied spaces for them to do that. We also have a state-of-the-art building that, in these um, climate change days, is doing its bit for the environment as well. And there is a display, actually, down on the right-hand side of the ground floor that just tells you a little bit about how our community is also doing its bit to support uh, the climate change agenda. And I'm not going to go into this too much because obviously you have a prospectus in front of you, you've been round and you've seen. But again, as a sixth form college, sixth form colleges tend to offer a much broader range of courses than your average school sixth form. Um, and being small, but we still do that. I have to say, timetable, nightmare. But we try and offer, so we've got 26 A-level subjects, we've got four complementary applied general subjects, and we try to offer them as, in as many combinations as we possibly can because we obviously want you to do the course that is tailored to you. And I'm really pleased that new for next year, we've got another couple of offerings. So if you've already been up um, to the biology, there will also be in there that new for next year, we are offering environmental science. Obviously, an incredibly hot topic. We have Green Careers Week in our curriculum in a couple of weeks' time, and there will be a lot of you sat in front of me who in some way, shape or form will probably be working and thinking about, in your particular role, how you're contributing to the climate change agenda. So environmental science, if you're interested in the science of how life on Earth works, go and have a look at that, please, um, in the lab with the biology. And then I'm also really excited about the collaboration that we're going to be running with Brooksby Melbourne College. So we are offering um, the Creative Arts Hub for the first time. So this is students who want to choose. There is a leaflet. There are um, a suite of subjects that you can choose three from. Brooksby will deliver the drama and theatre because they have um, a very lovely theatre that is also going through a multi-million pound refurbishment. Uh, and we're going to piggyback off the back of that so that our students get uh, advantage and take advantage of that theatre, get to be in their productions. Our students would also get to do drama enrichment with them, and they'll still be our MV students, but they'll be doing drama and theatre there. So we're really excited about getting that off the ground as a creative arts hub. They will have access to industry professionals, they will have mentors in the industry. So um, Katie from Brooksby is down in the bottom right-hand corner if you wanted to find out any more about that. But we also recognise, obviously, 16 to 18 are formative years and they can be wobbly, and never more so since the pandemic. So the year 12s that have just started with us, they're actually the first year group that did normal GCSEs, which means, obviously, that you coming through are going to be one of those as well, but you still miss two years of your life at some point through your education. So there is still some work to be done. So we 
don't let you sink or swim. We do have that support in place. So you will have a tutor, and wherever possible, we try and match you with a teacher who actually teaches one of your subjects, if you have that overlap. But we also have um, our safeguarding and welfare officer. She's been out on the drive routing you all affectionately known as Tibbs. And she knows most of the students, the students know her. So she's there for them to drop in and have a chat on any day that they're having a bit of a bad day. She also offers weekly sessions for students who need a little bit more support and need a listening ear. And then unfortunately our new SENDCO, Tony Johnson, can't be with us today. But again, we have our TAs who are in an office just behind the steps here. So if you have a SEND need or actually just want some advice, about study skills, please go and speak to them. Tony would love you to leave her your details that she can get back in touch with you personally after today. And part of that adult environment and part of that preparing <coughs> to go onwards is the personal development programme that we offer. So it's not just about getting the qualifications. It's about all of those skills that employers <laughs> and universities tell us are desperately needed in young people. So the teamwork, the collaboration, the ability to communicate with audiences, the ability to problem solve and critically analyse, we provide all of that through our personal development programme. Some of it is structured in terms of looking at things, for example, our Year 12s this week um, are celebrating Black History Month and they're looking at the history behind that. Next term we will actually be having enrichment activities that run through those and there are a host of clubs and societies to get involved with as well. There are a small selection in the NRC, the boards that are up there. Um, I'm very, very passionate about students starting their own clubs. We already have a volleyball club that started this year because the students said that's what they wanted and I really much, uh, very much like that they lead on those things as well. And I have to talk about our progression support. So I was blown away when I came in April at how good the progression support is here for somewhere of this size. It is mind blowing. So Mrs. Roberts, I'm going to, is our assistant head teacher, and there is very little that she doesn't know about any career or the right pathway. And if she doesn't know it, she definitely knows someone who does. So our progression pathway is stunning. And those students that are on the screen, they're just part of our alumni wall that you would have seen as you came in. And they are super special. And the reason that they are super special is that they form our alumni mentoring programme. And this was recognised in the Sixth Form College sector this year. We won an award for this because it was unique in the sector. Uh, they hadn't seen this happening before. So because our community is small, because we get to know them, they come back and they give up their time for us. So in July, we had over 50 alumni who went back to 2008, who came back, who told their stories to our students. Not only that, but they act as mentors through the year. So our vet science uh, students were on the wall. They're looking after our vet scientist applicants. They're helping them with their personal statements. They're having teams calls with them to prepare them for their interviews and to tell them what life is like in that world. So that's we're really, really proud of. It's incredibly special that we have that alumni mentor programme. And we also provide other opportunities for them to grow. So uh, we deliver core maths. Now I know that obviously Rishi is going to have everyone teaching maths and everyone learning maths in a few short years. I'm hoping that will be beyond my lifetime in terms of how we start it. But um, it is incredibly important for some students to have that background in core maths. Particularly those students who are doing courses such as health and social care, uh, psychology, geography, something where they might be going on to do um, a career. So we offer that. And we also offer the extended project qualification. Now, I used to run this for the exam board uh, nationally, and I could do an entire presentation about the wonders of the extended project qualification, but I'll leave that until you come to us um, next September. But it's a fabulous thing, and it helps prepare them like nothing else for their onward progression journey, and that is something that we're really thriving and, and growing here. In my previous college, it was compulsory. It's not compulsory here yet, um, but it is a fabulous thing that I like all of our students to consider. And obviously, it can't all be about the work as well. So we do like them to have fun, and we do like to bring in those op other opportunities. And I've already alluded to our extracurricular program. I have set out an expectation to our students that all of them should be engaging in something extracurricular in some way, shape, or form. And that could be from volunteering in the local community to being part 
of the netball team uh, to go off and be part this year is the winning an award for the debating team who went out uh, and won a debating competition. <coughs> and I thought I won't start with this, I'll just sneak it in at the end because I'm hoping that obviously by showing you what we offer and you going around and seeing what we offer, this kind of already speaks for itself as to why we got this. So back in March 2023, so just six, seven months ago, we were awarded or re-awarded Ofsted Outstanding. It had nothing to do with me. I wasn't here. Um, it was two weeks before I came. There was a little bit of me dodged a bullet. But um, I do absolutely, having been at Hills Road, uh, an outstanding sixth form college that has topped the league tables forever, I do know what outstanding looks like. Um, and I'm really excited to continue that outstanding journey here with all of the staff and the students at MV. And being outstanding means never resting on your laurels. So we are already moving forward with other collaborations that will help to ensure that our students get the best possible education for them. So we have joined the National Association for Able Children in Education. Their mission is not just spotting the, the top, but actually by spotting the top and then providing opportunity, we provide it for everybody and we step that bar of high expectation. Green Power, so that was a student who in his first week here came and said, I want us to build a Green Power car. I want us to join the Green Power project. Um, they get to build an electric car and they get to race it. He's got 30 students and it's wonderful to see him on a Wednesday evening with all his little different groups doing fundraising and marketing. And they're flying with putting together this car and going to race it. And that's absolutely what it should be. It should be them coming and saying, I want to do this, and us saying, great, let's see how we can do it. Birchwood have a site on the front, um, and I met their head teacher, and she said she would love it if she could have a hub within our college so that their post-16 students could get used to an adult, normalised environment. So they now have a small corridor at the bottom of the college. We have 20 Birchwood students who couldn't get through the door before the summer, who now sit in the cafe with our students and who are teaching some of our students sign language. And it is one of the most heartwarming things I've seen in 20 years. And it's absolutely what inclusive education is about. And we're really excited about what more we can do to strengthen that partnership. And it's really teaching our students about tolerance, inclusivity, and disability at the same time. And we've also joined, signed up to be an eco school. So we're looking at how we can become more eco-friendly. And again, this is being spearheaded by the Student Council. And they're looking at, they've got a framework of seven different steps that they have to follow to qualify us as an eco-friendly school. And as I said, it's never been more important that students get involved with that agenda. So I hope, obviously, that you're liking what you see. So what's next? So our application form goes live um, straight after half term, so Monday the 23rd of October, and that will be on the website. We'll be asking you for your most recent grade. So if you have got mocks coming up, I'd advise you to leave it until after that so that you have the most recent, most tailored grades for you so that we know that we're giving you the right advice and guidance. And then once we've got those applications in, we will be inviting you to an online guidance meeting. It's not an interview. It's to talk to you about you making the best choices that you can, to make sure that if you have a particular career in mind, that you're choosing A-levels or BTEC to actually go with it and don't actually stop you from going on to your next step. And then um, if you accept our offer, so there'll be a period of time where we ask you to accept our offer, we will invite you to a Discover MV Day in July. So just note those dates for your busy planning your holidays. So we'll invite you back, you'll do taster sessions in all of those subjects that you want to do. And it's very soon, we won't be asking you just yet, but just to let you know, obviously those of you that might have a bit more um, in terms of transport or travel to get to us, we do offer a bursary scheme. Um, the threshold is £45,000. So um, if you have a household income below that, you can apply to us to be part of that bursary scheme. It's on the website and it will tell you the types of resources. It's to support student education, so anything that helps to support it um, in the main on those in that list, we would be able to help you with that. And please, I'm not the person to talk to about transport. As I said, I don't know the area. Going out to Priory Beaver was the first, on, on Thursday, was a revelation for me. That very long road with all the partridge. Well, but <laughs> you do need 
So I'm not the person to ask where the buses come from, but uh, Mrs. Roberts knows everything. So if you do want advice about travel and how to get here, I have learned there is an RF1 that comes from Corby all the way through. But other than that, um, please speak to someone else. It's also on the website as well. So thank you very, very much for listening. Thank you for coming to see us today. I will be around and about if you have any questions. We hope that you'll consider joining our community and have a very lovely afternoon.